Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast, episode number 76 with Thomas Horlocker, head of creative services at Cyberry, uh, which is a, a digital education company that works in the cybersecurity space. Uh, they also just launched their own uh, podcast, which turned me on to talking to Thomas. Uh, they welcomed me into their podcast studio for this episode, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, it is a, a delightfully uh, geeky space decorated with all these kind of cool little trinkets. And we had a really... Uh, really great conversation about our shared geekdoms and stuff like that. So I um, really appreciate uh, uh, the time and the hospitality. Um, you can connect with their podcast and their YouTube channel, uh, as well as the other stuff that we mentioned in this episode and connect with Tom uh, down in the show notes for this episode. But uh, I know that this will be an enjoyable listen for you. Uh, so uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode number 76 with Thomas Horlocker. All right. Well, we are here in the uh, podcast studio at Cybrary. Uh, very gracious uh, welcoming here that uh, we're able to record in person, uh, which is a rarity, but I love it that we're able to do it. So uh, thank you so much for having us here hosting uh, this podcast recording, uh, Thomas. So I will let you introduce yourself, uh, give a brief overview of your professional journey and how you got to be where you are today recording here together in person. Uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, coming down, Dustin. Yeah. It's uh, great to have you here and uh, yeah, to have somebody else in the studio kind of running it. Um, is nice. Uh, it takes a little bit of the burden off my shoulders. Um, yeah, I mean, just a brief um, kind of intro. Uh, Thomas Warlocker, I'm the head of creative services here at Cybrary. Um, I guess my professional journey starts back in uh, college. I'm originally from Texas. Uh, I went to the University of North Texas, uh, where I studied in film. Um, after that, uh, like most people, I graduated didn't have a job. Uh, I moved back home. I lived with my parents for a while, uh, kind of going from odd job to odd job. I worked at a daycare and a uh, law firm uh, before I started working at Apple in Austin as a, a customer support representative on the phone. Um, did that a couple of years, um, kind of working my way up through the various departments, learning everything kind of about the Mac computers, systems, and everything. Um, at the same time, my buddy was working at a startup company in Baltimore, uh, Red Owl Analytics, um, and they were looking for an on-site IT person. Uh, all they used was Mac computers, so I was uniquely qualified to uh, there work go. there. So yeah. he asked me if I wanted to move across the country uh, to start at a startup company that I didn't know anything about. Uh, so I said yes, because I was tired of answering phone calls and being yelled at by strangers. Um, so uh, moved up to Baltimore and started working at Red Owl, which was initially just a crazy uh, kind of company to start working for, uh, kind of trial by fire. I was working with a lot of extremely smart people. Um, trying to find some common ground to talk to them about. A bunch of engineers and people have been doing it for years and years. Uh, all the people who sat around me, there was four or five doctors and, you know, wow. doctors in physics, math, microbiology. And they're like, oh, what'd you go to school for? I'm like, a film. I can tell you why this shot is cool, but, you know, that's Which, about it. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was just uh, really interesting, kind of learned. Uh, that's where I kind of started diving into uh, cybersecurity and everything. That's kind of what they did um, at Red Owl was um, insider threat detection. Um, so just kind of started learning all of that, learned a little bit about engineering. Uh, that company was eventually acquired uh funny enough, by a company based in Austin, where I'd moved from. Uh, and then uh, about October of last year, or October 2018, I guess, um, I was recruited to come work for Cyberry um, from two prior people. My same buddy who got me the job at Red Owl um, moved over to Cyberry. Uh, they needed somebody to uh, kind of build out a studio that they were looking for uh, to start filming some courses and then maybe do a podcast. Uh, because I went to school for film, I kind of knew a little bit of background of what they were trying to do. Um, and so moved over here and then uh, started here as the IT person. And then as uh, we continued to grow, uh, kind of created the creative services team. And then that's where we are today. Very cool. Um, well, and I guess you could maybe take it. Of course, again, I'm very interested in maybe uh, anything from your film studies that you feel like still resonates with you. So maybe it's a little bit of both or either or. But, you know, through your origin story, anything that kind of is still salient, you still think about like connections, mentors, just life lessons. So, you know, if it is just from college or from college and or all those different jobs that you've had that led you up, because I feel like, you know, all those things could, you know, all still be very valuable within the, you know, someone might kind of by outside perception be like, oh, it seems like you went through like daycare and like all this stuff, you know, it yeah. seems like so different, but it's like, well, you know what? I've learned a lot from all those things I still think about. So I'm curious, I guess, like college and or career, yeah. you know, those lessons. Yeah. I mean, college, uh, you know, just 
you just like most other people, I'm guessing you just kind of learn a little bit of everything, kind of more what you're focused on. Uh, I was really into film at the time. I was watching everything mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, writing papers on different stuff. So, you know, oh, this is why this shot is this way and that's why they're doing this, um, you know, which isn't super applicable to most of life. Uh, but then, I mean, our my odd jobs and stuff after that, I mean, especially Apple, I mean, that just gave me a greater respect for like customer success and customer service um, roles. Uh, so now I'm extremely polite to whoever I'm talking about, uh, talking with on the phone. Um, you know, you just kind of get an idea of people don't, you know, you're not always in the job that you want, but it's the job that you have right now. So just uh, understanding that not everybody's in the same place. Uh, so just got gave me a little bit greater respect for that. Um, But then once I got to Red Owl, um, kind of really opened my eyes to like a whole different industry um, that I had never really thought of or really knew anything about. And then just uh, doing a lot of learning like on the job, Uh, you know, while you're at work, kind of doing a little training here and there and kind of learning from everybody around me um, as much as I could uh, was really kind of what I took away from there. Yeah. Um, Yeah. There's a lot of value in that. And that's that's what I think like you know, it's a component of sort of the the lifelong learning sort of thing of just like being open to knowing what you don't know kind of thing and being, you know, willing to pursue that greater understanding of just like, and even if it's just the idea of like, you know, the people that are around you to be like, you know, getting that distilled down version of like, what it is, what is it that you do so that I can better understand how the whole kind of, you know, thing fits together. And um, I think too, yeah, just kind of, kind of like Goldilocks your way through to figure out like, well, yeah. I like this part of this job and this organization and the, you know, and like you can kind of, um, find that sort of focus and kind of more, um, firm idea of what you're looking for in the culture, or, you know, the job and that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it gave me like working with all the engineers gave me a great idea of kind of ownership of like things that I know and things that I don't know and just being comfortable with explaining like, yeah, I, I don't understand what you're talking about or can you go over it one more time instead of kind of fumbling your way through or, saying that you know what it is um, because in engineering you either know it or you don't like I can give you a basic engineering test or have you look at code and you either know it or you don't Um, so it's very black and white kind of in those circumstances so just kind of being comfortable with you know spreading your wings a little bit and kind of getting out of your shell and being like yeah I don't know this can you take the extra time to teach me Um, you know I'm willing to learn I just I don't know what I don't know yet well and you know that sort of learning mindset and you know I guess get you to give just a brief overview of uh, Cybery, but like, you know, digital education space here, kind of, go, you know, helping people to better understand things in the cybersecurity space, uh, kind of wherever they are on that spectrum of whether they're just starting out or looking to get, you know, a refresher on something or just any of the new trends going on. But um, so I guess, yeah, we'll start there. Just give a brief explanation of Cybery for anybody who might not know what it is. Yeah. So uh, Cybery is an online uh, cybersecurity career, uh, like development platform. Uh, So for those people wanting to get into the cybersecurity field or who are already in the cybersecurity field and just want to develop more skills, um, it's uh, kind of a a platform for them. Uh, The uh, initial founders um, wanted to do kind of create a place where people would be able to learn at their own pace. You know, most of cybersecurity training um, people think is going to a four year school, which Mm -hmm. isn't feasible for a lot of people or going to like a one or two week intensive training. Uh, which are usually super expensive, uh, and you have to usually travel for them. They'll be in some you know random location that right. you have to go to. Um, so trying to make knowledge open and available to everyone. Um, so initially, um, and still, most of the content on Cyberry is free. Uh, most of the video content, you can just go on, create an account. Everything, uh, most of it is free. Kind of after that, uh, we started adding you know practice assessments, testing, uh, mentors, quizzes, stuff like that, and that's where it gets into like an actual paid account. But it's still more feasible for a lot of people uh, than maybe like a four-year degree or something like that. And as you know, things are moving. Uh, a lot of tech jobs and stuff are looking for more skills than like a degree. So mm-hmm. if you know how to do the position, you know that would make you qualify instead of having you know so many years of experience and a degree and things like that. Yeah, and I know what I love it is just kind of how the education ecosystem is evolving. Is that it can be a both and sort of situation. Like it could be, you know, I'm really looking to get into this industry. This is going to be the skills I need to, to get my foot in the door and get a great job. And then it could be like, okay, well, we'd like for you to pursue, you know, this other credential and maybe that company is paying for you to do it. Like you said, cause it's, you're kind of priced out of it. It was like, well, I can't, you know, yeah, uproot my life and pay for something for four years, you know, or however long it might be. And those sort of things, I, that's always how I imagine it too. Or it could be like that kind of scenario or somebody again, who's really trying to 
you know, move up in their company and kind of build upon what they've uh, already learned before. But um, so, you know, yeah, this is obviously just a burgeoning, you know, exploding kind of, you know, field and everything and that you've, you know, jumped in from, um, you know, another kind of startup environment and everything. So being a little bit familiar with that, but like, what are you enjoying now about your current work? Obviously, you know, the podcast, I think is something that, you know, is like new and (laughs) uh, new and great and how we kind of got connected. Um, And I will say we are in the studio here and it's wonderfully geeky and I, I'm just a big fan with, you know, we got DC comics, Marvel and star Wars things. A Sega Genesis system is uh, resting on the wall here. Um, NBA jam, which is my, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, so <laughs> I just, I love that all this is here. It's a great space. So, you know, what are you enjoying about the current work that you're doing with this and everything else that's part of your job here? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the most fun that I get to, is just to be creative. Um, if you've ever, you know, looked at cyber and gone to like our YouTube page and stuff like that. Um, it's a little different than probably a lot of other, um, other companies in the ed tech space. Uh, you know, we have random shows that we do and little things that are all just funny and different instead of just, you know, Oh, here's the newest things that we came out with. Here's new features that you can look for. Um, you know, trying to be a little bit more creative, make things a little bit more fun and entertaining. Um, our company is very young, uh, and likes to do things a little differently. Um, we have a company motto uh, that uh, we always like to sprinkle just a little bit of FU on everything that we do. Um, so we try to uh, just kind of be different in the space. Uh, so just being creative is what I really enjoy about my uh, my current role. Um, I People always think that at any time anybody gets to come to the studio, they always think it's some amazing experience. They're always really excited. So it's nice to be kind of the fun bringer, I guess. Um, people are always excited to, to come into the studio or do anything or be on any of the projects and stuff that we ask them about. Um, but I mean, the best part is just kind of the freedom to figure the things out that we want to do. Uh, I, me and my team are extremely lucky in that the, everyone above us just kind of lets us do our work. Um, all of the weekend reviews and shows that we do, um, we create, edit, and then post. Nobody ever, there's no like quality assurance that goes in. Nobody looks at it to make sure like, oh, we don't want to say this or that. Um, they just kind of trust us to do that. And it's nice kind of having that trust and just being able to figure things out on our own. Yeah. Just bringing that humanity, like yeah, just like a exactly. very authentic and, um, yeah. And I think just creating that environment where you're building those connections and rapport and just like, you know, uh, hopefully making, um, what again, you know, just a lot of technical fields and things can be very intimidating if people aren't, you know, uh, feeling like they're proficient enough, but, um, you know, bringing in these people who uh, are doing this work and allowing it to be uh, a space where everybody feels welcome and yeah, you're just having fun and those sort of things. It's all yeah, all great stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean the the you know cybersecurity and IT thing is just a huge monolith for most people. It's like I have no idea where to start or I don't think it's for me and it, it's definitely not for everybody. But I mean anybody can get into it. I mean there's everybody was a novice at some point. Um, I mean, I have a little bit of background in it, but I mean, there's still so many things that I don't know and it's just kind of feeling comfortable. So instead of having like a very, uh, stern out facing look, it's like, let's try to make it seem a little bit more fun and enjoyable and, you know, uh, welcoming, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, cause it's like that balance of like not every job is for everybody. So it's like, you you know, I work remotely and I know I've talked to people and they're just like, I can, I can never do that, you know, but it's like anybody can like, you know, obviously we just have that ability to do that now, but it may not be everybody's preference. So you like, you'd want everybody to feel like they could and, you know, give it a shot and see if, you know, it does feel like it's, um, you know, a good fit for them and, you know, they can make that choice for themselves. So, um, well, I guess I'm, I'm interested, you know, I always love this question is, you know, what you're geeking out about. I know you were saying a lot of the geeky things on the wall here are yeah. your own. <laughs> and I think, you know, I think geeky, nerdy, you know, people just collecting a lot of things. I was just like, oh, finally a place for all these things to go. You know? Yeah. But because um, I feel yeah, I always have like plenty of things I can like adorn on walls and shelves and things. But, you know, anything in particular that you're, you know, geeking out about, if it's like some of the stuff that maybe you've like always been into that's reflected here in the space or um, stuff that you're getting into with like the podcast or something, you know, what's capturing your attention? Like what, what are you geeking yeah, out about? Yeah. Uh, I mean, for the longest time uh, I've been into comics and uh, just like the whole comic world, I do lean more towards DC than than Marvel um, but like I also follow image and a couple other kind of smaller brands um, but yeah I mean comics is definitely something that I've gone into uh, 
if you were at, saw my house, I have a bookshelf that's just single issues, like monthly issues of a bunch of different comics that I have. I have a couple long boxes that are just full that if you have any long boxes, they weigh like a hundred and something pounds. <laughs> I don't know why 23 pages of paper gets right, so yeah. heavy so quickly, <laughs> but it does. Um, so, I mean, that's something that I've always kind of been interested in and uh, reflects here in the studio. I have my Marvel encyclopedia, my DC encyclopedia, and my copy of Watchmen um, on the wall. Uh, it used to be my copy of uh, V for Vendetta, but I took that home because mm-hmm. uh, I like to change the things in here. Um, so, I mean, those are, you know, things that I always look for and kind of bring a little bit of inspiration from and uh, different kind of ideas here and there. Um, but also, like, uh, I mean, like most people, pop culture, like movies and TV shows. I mean, there's a lot of things that I follow that most people probably do. Um, the new Watchmen show and like the Mandalorian um, but also like I play video games you and me were talking about that just before um, off mic uh, and then I'm also really into like stand-up comedy um, so that's usually like most people like oh go to concerts or go to see plays and stuff I travel and go see stand-up when I can yeah um, so <laughs> yeah uh, I pretty much agree with all of that I'm awesome. sharing, yeah. sharing a lot of those interests <laughs> yeah I mean like uh, I went to an event recently and like the uh, name tag prompt that they had that I really like just something different is that, you know, you put your name on, but also like your favorite live performance. And I was like, what have I seen live? And I was like, oh, you know what? Stand up comedy. And I put yeah. down John Oliver. I saw several years ago oh. when he was still on the daily show. And some people were like, oh yeah, I didn't even think of that. Like, you know, everybody was putting like music down. Um, and I'm like, I don't really see music. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, Cause it's just like, I think just the levels of geekdom, you know, I kind of have like this, you know, ranked order and it's just like i mean music's on one of the lower ones and yeah like video games and movies and tv and you know all that kind of stuff is yeah like i would rather go to point. like an esports finals than like right right most sporting events <laughs> right, yeah <laughs> and no, it's almost like yeah i just want to like have like sort of the life achievement of like okay i've seen you know went to a baseball game whatever i went to the you know it's just kind of like to say that but yeah but like there's like an esports stadium around i probably you know be there far more regularly yes uh, which i feel like is on the horizon it's probably oh, gonna I'm be sure happening there's I mean, gonna be one around yeah. here very soon yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that's great. Um, but, uh, when I guess, um, in terms of these things, if you want to kind of dig a little bit deeper of like anything that you can think of, of like what those have given you in terms of like community or just sort of like any of your geeky interests and hobbies, you know, creative outlets, any of that kind of stuff, like what, what comes yeah, to mind? I mean, yeah. I mean, when I started reading comics and getting into comics, I mean, it was when I was in high school, I mean, the internet and stuff was definitely around, but it was before the birth of like the Marvel cinematic universe, which like got most people into comics so um you know there's people that i talked to and stuff about it but uh it's gotten it's nice that now like something that i've always loved is now like universally loved by like the entire world um so just kind of having like another connection with people um but i mean if if you've ever read comics or anything it's always about like good triumphing over evil Uh, so i mean just all of those stories about trying to be your best self and you know your best foot forward kind of those things is uh definitely like as i've gotten a little bit older you kind of start reading a little more in between the lines and like you know maybe i should be a better person and you know i could do this and that and you know you know i'm not gonna be superman i can't you know lift tall buildings or anything but i can you know just do little things here and there to help other people out and i try to bring that to work as well like try to always be nice and to everybody and fun treat everybody the same so kind of those little you know moral things that i think kind of they interweave in every story is something that i've always kind of looked at right and then like how, like showcasing like that's not always easy and how do you sort of like grapple with like those moments when it is hard to do yeah. the right thing and um yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, there's yeah several stories like I can think of like off the top of my head where it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, do you make the easy choice, the right choice or something like that? Yeah, because I think the I'm definitely like I've been, you know, lifelong gamer and I love Spider-Man and the uh, Spider-Man PS4 game that came out uh, somewhat recently. It's amazing. Yeah. And just that story, like for just because it was so perfect of like playing through the whole game and going through that story and loving Spider-Man and just like it felt like it was so well done. And it had kind of one of those moments of like, you know, do you do what's in your own self-interest or, you know, looking out for the greater good and obviously the, the responsibility that Spider-Man is always, you know, of course. Uh, on about. But uh, uh, yeah, just like, I think those stories and even sometimes where it's just, you know, it's the same character, but just in a different context or just like, what is the cultural moment that we're telling this story in and, you know, can really change the uh, perspective. And I just love now that we're seeing like, yeah, with the Mandalorian or just like different movies where it's like, uh, yeah, it's like a Western, but in space and like this, that, you yeah. know, it's just kind of like, oh, we're doing a heist movie, but it's with superheroes and we're yeah. doing uh, this and, you know, like, it's, yeah. And I think like, you know, Black Widow's coming out and that's very much going to feel like this like espionage, you know, kind mm-hmm. of, you know, spy intrigue movie. Um, 
with you know super powered people and all that kind of stuff so yeah. um so yeah just yeah it's it's cool because i think it you know we've seen a lot of the same kind of movies and whether or not i guess we're having like superhero fatigue or not but i'm just like hey as long as they're doing like new different things yeah, like it's... you can tell all these cool different stories with that sort of you know veneer on it i guess yeah. um but I guess I'm curious too, anything, you know, you mentioned a couple um, things that are on the shelf here, but um, anything else just kind of broadly of like what you're reading, watching, listening to, anything that you'd like to give kind of a tip of the hat to conclude in the oh, show notes? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, reading, um, I, I mean, I st re still read monthly comics. So, I mean, that I always have like a stack uh, that I'm trying to work my way through. Um, and then uh, just kind of uh, certain books like here and there, but nothing like too crazy that... You know, it's usually something I'm rereading for, you know, the hundredth time or something mm. like that. Um, old favorites. Um, TV and movies. I mean, that's something that I am constantly up to date on uh, and watching. Uh, like we talked about earlier, Watchmen, um, The Mandalorian. Uh, there's a couple of those new like Apple shows that are really good. Like I just got into For All Mankind, which is about like space, which like I'm a huge space fan. Uh, like anything that takes place in space, like I'm usually going to be on board for. Um, and then like succession is like an amazing TV show. Um, just all the people are just terrible to each other, but it's so interesting. <laughs> right. Right. Um, cause yeah, I need to, um, I'm honestly planning to probably just like go through it. The, um, uh, the Watchmen series, which I was very surprised that like, they're not going to do a second season, but, um, yeah. I've been just wanting to like sit down and give some quality time to like that show. The, the, so now it's like, okay, well, I mean, that's it. I'll just like, watch the, through all the episodes. And... Yeah. I mean, as you know, my job here, you know, head of creative services and being creative and creating things here and there, you know, like, oh, I think I kind of could do something maybe more. And then I watched The Watchmen and there's one specific episode which like blew my mind. And like, I don't even know how you would start to storyboard it, let alone write it down. And like, it, yeah, it's yeah. like, no, I can't do this. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's good. I mean, too, like, you know, yeah, the entire creative team of that show to their credit of just like, I think, yeah, really uh, blew a lot of people away and you know I think there was skepticism and stuff but that's why I'm like I'm very excited to like sit yeah. down and give some quality was, time to that yeah. show so. I was skeptical like yeah. two episodes in I was like I don't know and then like episode three I was like okay never mind I was wrong and then it got even better from there so yeah. <laughs> um, which I think just obviously we're just spoiled with you know so many different streaming platforms and like you know just having like a lot of stuff that I want to like play through in terms of video games and read and watch and you know listen to and all that but um because I think like it, I've gotten like mild spoilers for like uh, for Watchmen, but it's still like I just want to see how they do it. I want to see how they put the, like all these pieces together and stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'm, like trying to give myself too much grief of like you know not getting to it, but um, but yeah, I definitely would recommend a lot of those. Uh, I've enjoyed a lot of those things as well. Um, but uh, well, I guess if there's um, I'm trying to think any other like recommendations, like is there any classic book of those things maybe that you're rereading anything that maybe would be like one of your go-to recommendations um just to give something that people might want to check out well i mean it's actually here on the shelf <laughs> i have uh, one of neil degrasse tyson's books uh it's astrophysics for people in a hurry which i've reread like three times uh, i still don't understand anything in it but that's what i like about it um is i i don't know and it's interest it's interesting reading something that you really can almost barely comprehend. I'm always Googling something midway through a sentence that I've read um, and just kind of broadening what I think I understand about, you know, my life and then the universe and everything else. Um, so it, it, it's something that I like to read just every now and then pick up and read like a page or two before I'm too confused and have to sit down and think about Spider-Man for 20 <laughs> minutes or so. Yeah. Well, that's a good, yeah. Cause I think like just that idea of like, I'll sometimes have a lot of like you know, nonfiction books that are about like leadership and business or whatever. And like, I'll be reading and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the same stuff I've seen before. And it's kind of, you know, uh, just kind of chew it up, spit it out. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. You know, it wasn't bad, but didn't feel like anything, you know, revelatory, but, um, yeah, like reading a book that makes you be like, oh, okay. I don't know anything at all. Yeah. You know? like, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not relevant to anything in my life. There's no real reason that I should have read the book other than I heard it on a podcast and I thought it sounded interesting and just kind of yeah, it's like, you, you know, everybody's human. Like, it's you're always going to be learning your entire life. You know, might as well learn something completely out of left field or try to learn at least a very, very small part of it. I have a cousin who is a physicist and is like, 
yeah, you, you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm like, I know. I know I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to learn. learn. Uh, well, yeah, because I, I think that, yeah, it was the idea that you can, like, interact with people and if they're sort of, like, pretentious of, like, oh, well, I mean, you don't even, like, you know, they're being kind of, like, gatekeepers for things, which I think also happens just with, like, geeky and nerdy things. But thankfully now is they're becoming far more common and, you know, it's things are getting more accessible of, like, well, I got into it th- through this way so I can have a familiarity with what's going on, but... Um, which actually makes me curious. Have you uh, engaged at all with like the DC TV universe? They just had like their big yeah. crossover. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I have the DC universe app that has all their own, uh, you know, content and stuff on it. Um, Titans is really good. Uh, Young Justice, still great. Uh, I was super surprised by the Harley Quinn show. I thought it was unnecessary and it's hilarious if you've ever seen it. Um, it's really, really good. And like the crossover thing that just finished Crisis on Infinite Earths on the 14th, I actually just finished watching it last night, um, was better than I was expecting. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I like how they ended it and I'm excited for kind of where those shows are going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I yeah. agree. All yeah. in on DC. So Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's just funny because I think like to a certain extent, it's like a shame just like sometimes like whoever's first with at least like the live action representations of like Marvel and DC characters where I felt like I like was really enjoying it. But then there's always this thing in the part of my head is like, well, this kind of feels like uh, Avengers Endgame a little bit. Like where it's oh. just like, it's like similar kind of like settings, but it's like I they should... obviously did them all very unique, you know, yes. in their own ways, yeah. but these seismic, you know, huge universe kind of shaping events. Um, I can show you my text from yesterday where I was saying pretty much the same thing, but yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, with something like that, with any story, I mean, there's going to be so many things that are so similar. I mean, there's only so many ways you can, you know, do something on screen. Right. No spoilers. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm trying to be as vague yeah, as yeah, possible. Yeah, me too. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just any of those things. That's what I, just hearing how, you know, people maybe have like come to their hobbies and their interests and sort of the value that they give and being able to like connect with people and build community and just like sharing the enthusiasm is just like always a really fun part of this. Uh, all these things, all the things that we're into. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, um, yeah, I mean, Comics has really served me more than I would expect because each little panel is like what you would think of as like a film shot. And so like mm-hmm. it kind of helps when if you're trying to record something. It's like, oh, well, maybe it should look like this or we could put the camera here. Like it it helps more than I thought it would or, you know, as a kid, I you know. Yeah, because I think too, like knowing how long, you know, comics have been around, you know, just it's a, yeah, again, you can really draw that parallel like people who are doing cinematography or anything like that, it's like, oh, they did that shot in a really interesting way. And then it's like you're reading a comic book. It's like, oh, wow, this illustrator is just like doing a very interesting style or, you know, anything like that. And I think I've been thinking about that, just, you know, really drawing kind of anything from uh, this stuff as we're kind of just like working in our uh, daily lives and all that kind of stuff is just like prompting people to see like, where do you find that inspiration? Like it could be obviously just not having a direct connection at all of like, well, I'm reading this comic book about, you know, crazy superhero stuff, but just like, the creative energy and the art aspect of it, you know, and just being like, well, yeah, yeah, you know, like you're saying, like kind of, it differs your perspective. Like never would have thought to look at this this way or that kind of thing. And you kind of bring that to your daily life. We're just like, yeah, well, let's, let's all kind of bring that, you know, to what we're doing is having that different perspective and all that. So, um, well then we will uh, end here, I think on the note that I love to look at of what you're looking forward to, just the optimistic note of what you're looking forward to in your job, life, and or the world. So anything that's on your mind, obviously, you know, your podcast has just started, so there's so yeah. much more to come with that. We'll include links to check that out in the show notes and everything. So, um, but yeah, anything that comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, with the job, I mean, I feel like we just kind of started rolling with, uh, I mean, the creative services team, we just came together in August of last year. Um, so it's still, you know, extremely new for all of us. Um, so just kind of getting that up and running and continuing doing what we've been doing. I'm really proud and excited of all of the stuff that we've created. Um, I think it's just fun little things here and there that we've been able to do. So uh, continuing to do those things um, and doing more kind of larger episodes um that we did i don't know if you saw like the halloween episode like zombie outbreak one was just like a lot of fun to do and being able to do that in the office and have everybody kind of buy in and people doing makeup um just kind of getting everybody together was a a lot of fun um so i'm excited for that i mean our podcast just launched uh like two weeks ago so excited for that to kind of get up and running and and do more episodes with that and then um you know having people in our space uh personally uh I'm going to Iceland next month for my birthday, so I'm like very, very cool. looking forward to that. Yeah. I've Googled it like a million times. Um, I have slightly on my bucket list to meet uh, the mountain from Game of Thrones who lives in Iceland. Uh, so if you listen to this, uh, I will be there. I'm going to be looking for you. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> that's what, just one of the things. But um, yeah, I mean, I've 
yeah, the trip I'm uh, excited about going and kind of seeing something different. And then I also recently got a dog. So that's uh, just a huge change in my life that yeah. getting used to and uh, excited about. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, cause I think it, it I had our, uh, me and my wife had our dog for, I guess now almost uh, three years, uh, like by the end of this year. But, um, yeah, just one of those things where it's like, I keep thinking about it and I tell my wife that I'm just like in this like existential way of like, oh, we're like taking care of this little living thing. Or whatever, yep. you know, we're about to have a baby too in a couple of months yeah. just as of the recording of this. So obviously that's going to be like even more so taking care of a little living yeah, that's thing. That's what I've but heard. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like, that's also the joke where it's like, oh, I have a dog. I know what it's like to have a baby. And I'm like, this has prepared me in like an ounce of a way of, you know, just that idea of like, I have to think outside myself and, you know, be considerate of that kind of thing. And, you know, so I'm always grateful for that and, you know, all that. And, uh, cause I, I, I would, I'll have to see, I guess, after uh, the baby arrives, which is like, was it really good preparation or not? Or what, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's obviously just such an amazing thing to have like a, a pet to, you know, welcome you home and do all that good stuff. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, well, all great stuff. And obviously I will uh, include ways to connect with you and all the work that you're doing and Cyberary, uh, in the show notes and all the stuff that we talked about here. Um, yeah. Thank you so much again for welcoming us into your space here and yeah. for hanging out for a little bit. And, yeah. Thanks for coming and down and that. hanging yeah. out with me and being in the studio and giving me yeah. a lot of tips and stuff. I appreciate it a yeah, lot. Yeah. Yeah. This is a great time. So thank you so much. This podcast is part of the connect edu podcast network, bringing together diverse voices in the higher ed community. Check us out on Twitter at ConnectEDUPod or at ConnectEDU.network. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast.